you need. Okay, welcome, welcome, welcome. And um, today, Free Odyssey, I have been channeling information like crazy, and it's all today about intuition and how to build the intuition up and what is intuition. So I wrote down a lot of information here, and I will read it through what the automatic information was that they sent me. And automatic writing is literally, I tune into my guides, I get out of my head, I get out of my own way, and I end up writing down what they give me the information. So that's what I've been doing today. Um, wrote down the information, and also, I'm so excited because I can hear them and feel them here as well so no no doubt they will interject at some point uh, and this will be here for you on the membership group and then you can just click in and listen to it as many times as you like so I shall begin <laughs> okay I'm excited because I can still feel them in my energy so okay let's have a little look so intuition what is intuition and some people get quite confused like, with intuition and with your psychic abilities and psychic abilities and intuition are very very different and sometimes they're so close they intermingle and they overlap sometimes okay so okay thank you first of all what they said this first of all I want to say with the psychic abilities it's more about feeling into the blueprint like the fingerprint that's why always how I see it of the individual uh, around you so say for instance that individuals feel faults and emotions and they take in the world through the eyes and they wrote this down as well I'll go through it so everything that you take in around you your eyes are taking in the information your senses your skin is feeling in information, you're hearing information, you're taking all information in. Now, depending on your experiences, your body reacts to the experiences. So if there's something that you need to be fearful about or go into protection mode, thank you, they just said the subconscious mind is part of your protection mode, a part of the brain, how it's com how it was completed, how it was made to protect the human being on your planet. Thank you, they just said there are many, many obstacles that you humans face you don't want to get knocked down again they said to me and they're trying to have a joke because I got knocked down the first time so I won't walk out in front of the car anymore because I know it's quite painful and I don't want to keep dying and coming back and coming back and coming back or oh, whatever um, anyway so the protection mode is put in so we know that we hold on into the subconscious mind the feelings the faults and the experiences that we have from things that have happened to us through childhood and everything else so that's held in your body and your brain processes that and then because your brain is very good as a control tower it knows that it needs to uh, then transmit all these chemicals throughout your body so that then it gives you the adrenaline to run away from something or to make sure that you freeze or whatever you need to do so no dinosaurs now so we don't need to do that's part of the old part of the brain the three parts of the brain that's the limbic part of the brain so we don't need to do that anymore so what happens is the subconscious mind keeps holding on to the information Information and you produce all these chemicals from whatever experience you're having so go back to the psychic stuff the psychic stuff is is that literally as a medium as a psychic I will tune into the individual and there is this information like a fingerprint of a blueprint around you that is produced so the chemicals you send out okay thank you they said see it like this it's a bit like garlic when you've had garlic the night before and you wake up in the morning you have this smell of garlic that comes out in your body you are porous it comes out of your body very much like being psychic you pick up the energy of the individual that oozes out now they know they're speaking very fast and they will answer questions at the very end but this is how they speak i'm trying to slow them down they're speaking even faster so it's a bit like the psychicness you'd have to you step into that energy of the other person so many of you who are listening to this right now are psychic and you're feeling into what's going on around you you're feeling into the environment you're feeling into the people around you you're picking up and their energy because you're porous and they're porous intermingles so you might pick up on something so it might be that you walk into a room you're not reading body language but you might walk into a room and you feel there's some tension in the room it's because you're picking up on the energy of the adrenaline in the room and the pores and you move in and out of your body and also becomes like a psychic overlay of information like a blueprint and fingerprint they keep repeating that because they think it's very important that you need to hear it so that is the psychic side so they said, then you receive information. So, okay, thank you. Anne had a client before and the client sat in front of her and they said, how comes that you are saying the same thing as the other psychic said to me? And then I said, well, because I know that you've had a bad relationship because the chemicals and your experience of your human vessel self, which is housing your soul, experienced the heartbreak, the emotions around that and so that you're energy level around you as in this if you imagine like that is yourself and it goes through the layers of yourself and you're holding information in the grain just like the wood is holding information then you are still holding the information from childhood and any emotions anything that's happened to you 
So the psychic picks up on that fingerprint of who you are and what's going on for you. Now, you might say, okay, how come they can predict things? Well, again, your where time and space is not how you see it as a human being about reality and the dimensions. Now, as a psychic, they can see forward and they can see back and they can see from side to side. So not necessarily there is such thing as past or the future there is just but the present moment of where you stand in time as a psychic your energy expands out and you're moving in within the universe and the universe is bringing forward whatever is meant to be for you now it changes every time that you upgrade yourself and your soul your destiny changes it's free will whether you want to step into that so if you do the work on yourself personally your destiny is going to change so it's a bit like the manifestation side of things that if you start wanting to manifest something different in your life that is more likely to come closer to you when you are at that stage in yourself and you're accepting it and wanting it okay thank you data there is no point in thinking oh i want that house i want that car i want that relationship i want that partner if you are not feeling it or stepping into it then you might ask the question as in well because i haven't had that how do i know well for your human experiences that's how you know but what the human tends to look at is that how far away they are from achieving what they want so if you want that car you go to the car showroom you try out that car you sit in that car you smell that steering wheel i did that actually you smell that steering wheel you smell into the environment of this brand new car and then you use it when you do your manifestation and how i would have felt when my hair was blowing in the wind and my convertible car and that's what i created was my convertible car you have to step into it you want a new relationship you have to love yourself better than you've loved yourself ever before otherwise wherever you're at in your stage in your life you will present that new partner that's at the level at where you are at yes it's good because they help you to move forward through the uh, relationship that you have and they said that's going to be too complicated to explain in just two seconds but yes you're going to invite in anything you want okay thank you they said also if you're having a bad day you are going to have those memories and it's going to evoke all those emotions and all the chemicals that you are remember you are porous you're going in and out of your body you are going to invite then other things that you have in your life now there is also this thing about anchoring and priming your brain now if you're at the stage that you are having an experience that yes you bumped your toe on the side of the bed in the morning and then you're saying well that's primed me to have a bad day and so I'm only going to notice the bad days, the bad things that happen throughout the day. Well, this is true to some degree, but you're also inviting energetically the things that are going to upset you throughout the day because you already set your level, your chemical level at where you're at in yourself. They said they said they hope that you're keeping up. <laughs> I have some Victorian gentlemen here. That's how they look. They've got the, the braces and they're very interested in, in everyone that's listening to this information right now. I love it. So they're in and out, in and out. OK, love it. So not true trance, but channeling the information. So they said, let's go back now. Let's go back to the intuition. OK, very important. So this is I thank you. These are the guys that obviously were channeling throughout the day. And I think it changes as I read this information they've wrote. And again, my bright writing is all over the place. So I have to go through this that I think the different guides came in because I can feel there's a little bit of a difference here. So they said, OK, intuition. Intuition is the animal instinct in all of you, you have been created with this animal instinct. So, for example, the baby in the cot in the hospital. Yes, they have been in the womb for a long time and they've been in this certain position. And then after a while, if there's some fear, like a loud sound or there's a temperature change, you might see a baby go like this. And it might be, yes, because their body has been in that fetal uh, stage, how they would have looked and how they would have been in that shape and form within the womb for such a long time. But there is this natural instinct. If there is a change in the environment of the air, the temperature or a sound, the baby will flinch as if to say, oh, I need to protect myself. That is a natural born instinct to keep that baby safe. That is inbred. You have been sent forward with that, your natural born instinct to protect yourself. Your brain is aware of it. Your brain is like, oh, there's something there I need to be afraid of. So your brain is in gear, is in line with your instincts to some degree. Now, the animals that know when there's a tsunami coming, they are working with their instinct. They do not have the newspapers or the magazines or the news flash from the TV saying there's going to be a tsunami, they fill into the temperature changes. They fill into their environment. They sense things. An animal can sense when you're on your way home because it picks up on your energy stream. 
it picks up that the fact that you're going to come home to them, they're aware of that. The animal also picks up in the sense if you are not feeling quite yourself. Thank you, they just said they work in harmony with your energy of who you are. You are porous. So you are sending out information constantly. Animals do not judge. Animals have not been told or instructed like the human being. Now you have to remember you have all been sent here with this natural intuition but it has somehow been bred out of you from the environment that you have lived in. This is the constant, the Instagram. This is the constant on the phone. This is the constant on the computers. This is constantly, and they just laugh because you're on a computer. This is the constantly listening to outside information. Outside information from news channels, governmental bodies and everywhere else. And then in the end, you get to the stage where then you ask your friends for advice, family members for advice. And of course, when you then reach out of yourself for advice to guide you, it's from their own experiences. It's not from you. So it might be that you ask a friend or a family member, what do they think about this partner you're going out with or whatever. Now, if they've come from an abusive background and they are going to have their own experiences of what they think and feel. So if you tell them something, they might overreact to some degree and they will go with that word overreact because of their self-defense mechanism through what they have learned from being in their own relationship. What humans tend to do is when you get to a certain stage, you tend to not ask internally within your gut instinct, your natural intuition, you tend to ask externally from out yourself. And so then you then find it even harder then because you get into a pattern of reaching out for guidance instead of working with your own internal guidance, your own internal navigation system, which is your compass point, which is your compass is your soul. If anything, you should be learning about how to tune into your intuition so that then your soul can then guide you and your soul will reach for your higher self, then will come down and then will, well, not necessarily come down, but will connect with you so that can guide you on your mission. So, okay, thank you. I think just said. So intuition is guided and governed by where you're at in yourself and through your experiences. So they mean through whatever you have experienced throughout your life is going to affect your natural intuition, your natural ability. If you have been instructed as a child, don't be silly, don't do this. And they've been coming up with some ideas and say, well, I feel I should do this. And then you have been parented by whoever has been your caregiver at any given time. It's almost dismissing your natural ability or natural intuition of what you think is right and what they think is right. Now, yes, you have been given parents to protect you to some degree, but sometimes there has been this shape and form of over protecting and also from the parents point of view. So we are not, thank you, they said, of saying every parent is bad, but they're saying that the parent has been set forward to guide you, to protect you, to support you. But depending on their background, depends on how through their experiences they will parent you. So from a young age, you can already be told or start to think, oh, I can't trust my natural ability or my natural instinct. You might not be consciously aware of that, but you start thinking, oh, am I silly to think that? Should I not do this? Should I not do that? So that happens right from the early part of childhood and also through your schooling. Thank you. They said they didn't like our schooling, uh, how we have just been programmed like for the Industrial Revolution just to go into work, how we decide that we must go to work at certain times of the day and how we must live our life in a certain way. So there's that as well. This is what they just said. So you are governed by your experiences, your intuition. Now, thank you. They said. There is also this thing that they're saying to me about being empathic. So, okay, thank you. To some degree, everyone starts off as being empathic. There is this connection to other human beings because you want to live in harmony as a community. You want that harmony of living with each other. And empathy is coming from the heart center. You are all equipped with the heart center and the empathy to connect in with each other. There is a, a, a mechanism, thank you, the mechanism within the brain that when you look at somebody, you can have the empathy for what they're going through. You almost put yourself in those shoes. So there's that part of the empathy of, um, of connecting with each other. And the empathy helps you to grow with your intuition to some degree. 
Now, sometimes it can go astray where if you are so empathetic uh, through your life experiences of you, say, for instance, you have gone through a toxic relationship, then you can empathize with somebody if they're going through a toxic relationship. So you connect to each other energetically. But sometimes that for your human experiences, it gets in your way. So they just are bringing that up about the empathy. So be aware of the empathy, how you are feeling for your human experiences of it's how it could be affecting your natural intuition as well. So it's about just keeping it in check, they said. And they'll, they'll look at it further, they wrote more. OK, so if there has been somebody who has been scared, uh, scared around you and they put the fear of God in you because it's the protection mode. They're talking about what I just said about the parents or your friends and the trying actually start to listen to their experiences so if they turn and said oh yeah I went on that fairground ride and I fell out that time so then it makes you fearful of getting into the fairground ride so you're already having their information that is programming you from their experiences and being the empath you put yourself into you're raising they said your natural intuition is rubbing it out is you're not listening to yourself as much you're listening to other people's uh, what they are going through OK, thank you. They said it will be working, for example, on I think they said about the alley. They just said to me, if somebody again, like the fairground, they just said, if you were if you had gone through an experience where you have been mugged or you've gone down an alley and you've had a terrible experience and then you tell the people around you, they are hold on to that experience. And again, that gets in the way of your natural intuition. You think, oh, OK, am I fearful walking down the alleyway or is it my natural uh, intuition that's telling me not to go down that alleyway? So there's about finding a, a balance in this from other people's experiences, your experience and what you are picking up and what you're feeling but already from childhood going to school being parented it starts to raise down your natural uh, intuition so this is about how you start to build it up it's about looking at how it can help you okay thank you so it now needs to be reprogrammed by releasing old patterns of old self-limited beliefs so as the human sometimes we have those old self-limited beliefs of what we can do and what we can't do and also how we imagine what intuition is and everything else that gets in the way okay thank you they said through awareness, as if now you have been woken up from a deep sleep. So for you to be sitting here today thinking about what is intuition, they already say your conscious mind is becoming aware to ask, what is intuition? How is it going to affect me? How does it affect me moving on? So there's already a change in your energy because you are looking at intuition now you're already starting to break down of what you thought it once was now you're starting to move forward with the energy of looking at intuition this is what they just said okay so through being observant of your everyday awareness you begin to take in the world in a different way okay so what they're saying is they're saying about as the human they now want you to start to reconnect with your intuition they want you to start to become aware of how you are consciously being aware of how you're living your life daily. This is this is they said this is the only way to do this. So they want you to become aware of what is your information and what is external from you. So they want you to start tuning in and being aware of it. OK, so they want you to be aware that when you take in your daily life, being aware of how you are feeling. OK, they want you to connect to the sense of if something is making you happy, look at how your body is feeling. Now, we know intuition is about your body. It's your natural gut instinct. It's about what you were born with, like the animals feeling a storm, like the baby that reaches out when they're scared of wherever they are in that cot and they're no longer in the womb. So your intuition is about feeling into how you are feeling so that when you become more aware of your feelings and be aware of your senses naturally your natural intuition will kick in so if you are in an area or if you're in a room you'll naturally be aware of something's not quite right your natural instincts will take part so what they want you to do is it's like the snapshots of your day 
So I sometimes put this on my Instagram. If I'm out walking, what I'm enjoying. So if I'm out walking in the countryside, I'm enjoying. If I'm out in Kew Gardens and I've been aware of the trees and the leaves blowing in the wind, I'm aware of how the wind feels on my body. I'm aware of how the wind feels internally within me. So it's about the silly, tiny little things we've taken for granted. Because the way we do that, we take for granted, they just said, we go into our mind too much. So meaning, Sometimes we have daily issues or traumas or problems or issues that are arising that thank you. They said your brain becomes too busy and overloaded. So sometimes when we wake up already from the moment our eyes open, they said we're already thinking about what we should be doing with our day. Instead of gently waking up, maybe through meditation about tuning, resetting your own energy, that how you're going to set your day, how your day is going to be. Sometimes we can take an overload from the day before and bring it forward. So already our mind becomes so boggy, so bogged with information that we are then unable to tune naturally into our intuition. The intuition is what your body helps you with. So you have to now be that vessel that is more aware of your surroundings, more aware of what your natural ability is, that your senses and senses, as in, as they just said, like the dog feeling the storm is coming. And then without you even thinking after you've done this over a time, it will naturally come straight in. It'll be, you're activating your intuition that something doesn't feel right. And it could be literally there's a breeze or there's a wind or there's a sound uh, okay thank you like a siren and you're scared that you yep yeah, you've got to get out of there activating your intuition is something very different from the empathic side of you or the logical thinking part of your brain but to activate it, it's about becoming more mindful of how you're living your daily life so that is like how does this coffee taste how does that food taste uh brushing your teeth just be with brushing your teeth they said many of you we are aware you brush your teeth and we know that you're already trying to correct issues or looking at issues throughout your day or problems or looking at what you need to do by nine o'clock in the morning or you need to get to work or how you're thinking about getting to work you're listening to the radio you're watching tv you're checking instagram you're on facebook whatever it is or you're texting you're stepping out of you you're going into your mind you're not working with your intuition if you wake up to reset your mood through meditation or to lift your mood to play that playlist of music that you like and then you go into the using your natural intuition your intuition will kick in a lot quicker but if you are putting the radio on or you're putting the news on or the tv on your brain is focusing so much you don't feel into your natural intuition you won't feel into that it might be your natural intuition, you get to that stage that your guide comes in or your inner voice comes in and says, keys, don't forget your keys. That's your intuition. It's like, okay, yeah, my high self is connecting to that. Yes, I must remember my keys. It all works in sync. So your intuition will help you also to connect to your higher self. Your higher self will be able to communicate with you a lot easier because your brain is having not having fog where it's thinking about all the things that you think you need to do at front of the day. Okay, thank you they just said okay so we need to look at the programming that you've had from a young age they sort of said okay so intuition is like the animal feeling inside of you the natural environment around you being aware of what you feel being aware if there's a storm coming okay and then they also said about the technology also then it creates a fog it creates a boundary if you're always going to check hey siri oh what's the weather going to be like today or whatever it is and you're asking you know your device on the tv connected they said alexa get me to whatever channel it is you're they want you to go to them it'll be hey God, hey my guides or hi my higher self give me that information it's the same thing but not to connect to the technology the electrical technology would be more to connect to your guides and your inner self and your higher self will come forward in information okay thank you okay 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 and then they said they, that okay i've got that information they're giving me the information that's so i'm going for it okay okay and they said the information that you are receiving in your daily life, everything you're receiving, your mind is translating it for you. And then your mind is holding on to your experiences. So it's this intuition is about getting out of your mind and not to be thinking. Okay, thank you. And they said, 
where you are in at yourself, the repeatedness again, that however you're feeling yourself, if you're going through a really depressive state in your, from whatever's going on in your life, it makes it harder to connect to your natural intuition. You get fogged with um, asking the questions about how can I connect to my high self? Should I do this? Should I do that? Because you are fogged over with the depression. It clouds your brain. This is what they said. So your job is to reset and to retrain, to encourage new information to coming in. We've seen it through your body. So when you are drinking the coffee, it's to feel it in your intestines. It's to feel it in your body. How does it make me feel? To be aware of the sugars in your body, to be aware of how your body naturally responds to it. This is working with your intuition. It's helping you to become more in line with what's going on for you okay thank you by working and having the awareness of your energy what sucks your energy out of your body those toxic people around you that are energy draining again fit into that that affects your natural intuition that also can block it if straight away that you know somebody that is is there that uh, will bring your mood down that affects your intuition your natural intuition Ah, now they said if your natural intuition is that when you see that person you think they're going to bring my mood down I'm going to run away then that's good you've listened to that natural intuition you're not so much thinking it's more about your body's feeling okay thank you sometimes um if I'm in the supermarket and I pick up a packet or something I literally have it in my hands and I'll go ah how's my body going to feel about this and I feel a terrible sickness in my body my body responds in feeling sick not my head thinking oh it's got these calories in it and this is what this does and this is how it breaks down the food my body feels it and I can feel it in my gut straight away that's my natural intuition working with me and I put it back on the shelf again so that's how it's sort of working for me okay this is have a little look let's have a look next page okay uh blah, blah, blah. okay Ah, I th thank you they said okay and again they will say when you start learning at learning and looking at what helps you to feel happy in your day to connect the music the food your environment wherever you are you can then start co-creating your universe with you you can then start changing internally within yourself and then your energy around you starts changing as well because your intuition starts changing your intuitions become starts aware of something totally different okay it says it becomes easier easier you may notice when um, you have a bad mood, they're talking about Mr. Messy. Okay, they're talking about, you know, the Mr. Men, the books that you get, Mr. Long Nose and Wiggly Arms and everything else. They're bringing me like the Mr. Messy as in that's your energy. So as again, as I said before, if you bump your toe and the emotions that you feel through bumping your toe and the chemicals that you feel through bumping your toe creates your energy around you and it changes your energy and what you attract to you. The universe can only bring you like for like. OK, they just said. OK, so there's a few things they, they are saying. OK, thank you. OK, right. I got it. So they're saying, uh, OK, the inner voice. OK, thank you. They're saying there is a few things that you can activate your intuition. Yes, the snapshots throughout your day or things that you enjoy doing, being mindful of how it makes you feel so that with your natural intuition is part of how your body and how you're responding to something straight away within a millisecond that you go oh okay I know I don't like that no I'm not having that because you're doing the work now so if you do the work by starting doing the mindfulness being aware of what you like to eat how it makes you feel after you've eaten that project that project that product uh being around certain people how that makes you feel being in certain environments you're going back to reprogramming yourself so intuition is your natural ability just like you were as a baby to feel into the energy around you so so quick millisecond that you're unaware of it now they also said there's some other things that you can try so because they need to reprogram that who are listening some of you might need reprogramming this so what they're saying is to exercise your natural intuition so like the pack of cards shuffling the pack of cards and allowing then you to pick out a card. And as you're tuning in and, and shuffling the card, it may be then you stop and you go seven of hearts. You look at the seven of hearts and you're like, oh, okay, it is the seven of hearts. There is an energy around the seven of hearts. Every single number, every single color, every single shape and form, there is energy around that. So then you start to move into your psychic abilities, but it's about, they want you to practice your natural intuition of internally what's going on in your body, what you are sensing, what you're feeling around in your environment and how it makes a difference. And so in the end, they said that you'll get to that stage, you'll shuffle that pack of cards, you'll see 
internally within you there is that number seven of hearts so they want you to try that first they said they said they know how it sounds but they want you to try it they said also by setting alarms and your alarm clock for instance it may be on your phone that you set an alarm now you set the intention that you are going to be aware where your alarm goes off so we're not talking about the alarm to wake you up some of you might be aware that you wake up before your alarm clock because your body's already tuned into that. I must wake up for that. Again, your natural intuition is about protection and helping you. So your intuition is now being um, a program to sort of be aware of that. You might then decide to set alarms. And they just said, I set alarms throughout the day because I like to keep practicing. Uh, I set alarms throughout the day and I normally get to my alarm on my phone before it goes off. Again, that's your working with your intuition. But I know that's going to go off. I know you know what time it is. Not that I'm consciously aware of the time watching the clock. It's that I feel into that energy of that time. Everything has an energy around it. Okay, thank you. And they also just turned around and said to me, when the phone rings, tune into that sort of are you picking up the phone call are you aware that someone is going to phone you there is this psychic energy yes which is expanding that the individual might be thinking of you and you're picking up the energy stream but your intuition will pick up on it too so your intuition will say hey okay there's something going on someone's going to call you because you heightened the senses of your natural human person your senses that you'll feel the energy coming in from the phone call from that person thinking of you so your intuition is starting to really waken up now so this is what they said your intuition could be used as in as and just said you're going into the shop to buy something should i do that you're starting to ask yourself questions instead of asking externally others you're starting to ask yourself your senses are being activated you're feeling you're seeing you're hearing the sounds everything is being now reactivated internally within you and that's your natural intuition you want to go back to asking yourself I, my gut feeling what is my gut feeling which is the same thing as intuition my gut is telling me not to buy that my gut is telling me not to go into that relationship my gut is saying don't buy this you're working now with your intuition it's this ebb and flow of with using your pores from your skin the energy that's flowing in and out from the energy things around you okay thank you uh, let's have a little look there we go okay okay they just said there's something about there okay okay thank you they said by doing that you start working with your inner voice now some of you might say what if my inner voice is that inner voice that's saying I look too fat in this I look too thin in this I look too spot in this I look too old I look too young and whatever it is that's not your inner voice from your soul. That is the inner voice from your subconscious mind that has picked up all the experiences throughout your whole life of somebody said this about you, somebody said that about you. So your inner voice is like your higher self, your soul. It could be your guide you might be working with and you'll tell the difference as you go on to do more stuff. But it will be working with your intuition that you're feeling out into your environment your natural intuition feels out like feelers like tentacles it feeds back the information to the physical form of the human being that you're picking up on all the information okay thank you they said the way that your body has been constructed you can hear you can see you can sense and all those senses that you have has been created that way to work with your intuition so that the programming internally within you helps you throughout your daily life but you've turn that off because you are programmed psychologically to listen to others news telling you not what to do your parenting your schools your workforce is telling you no don't do that whereas your gut instinct is saying no i want to do that so it's about the program and that's happened okay thank you okay they said when you start activating your intuition you build that more stronger connection with your soul and your soul begins to have that conversation with you about why you are here, your life purpose, your mission. It will sync up a lot better because you'll feel into that intuition and you'll start being guided. Yes, this feels right for me. My intuition is telling me I know I need to get that job in that other country. Yes, I know I need to travel. Yes, I know I need to write that book. Yes, I know I need to create that course. Yes, I know I need to do this. Yes, I know I need to go catch the train right now. So what happens with the intuition, because you're building upon it, becomes that strong muscle. So it helps you to make decisions really, really, really fast, really quick. 
and then it helps you to connect into your soul journey of where it is and what it is you need to do but it's a process that you need to learn and they said it's about reconnecting to it okay thank you okay let's have a little look what they said okay and again, they're talking about how we have been programmed to think that we have to keep thinking from the mind. And really, we should be tuning into the heart, which carries that intuition, too. So your heart will tell you your heart will be your guidance. Your heart is your compass to help you to understand your intuition. It, your heart processes. It's not so much your mind. Your mind is the mechanical part of you, which will say this is how this feels. But it's more to do with your heart that you need to go to always to ask to ask your heart. OK, thank you. Now, they said now what happens when you start to change things in your life, when you start going into this reprogramming of yourself and start thinking, OK, I'm going to work more with my natural intuition instead of, you know, asking the phone what the weather's going to be like or asking a friend or whatever it is, whatever you will start to feel some of you will start there's a resistance and you might start to feel a frustration. So when you are activating or reactivating your intuition and working on the soul level of yourself, your mind begins to kick in and starts saying, oh, this is rubbish. I can't do this. Or this is what's happening or what that's happening. There's just resistance because you're brain on a psychological perspective they said has decided that you've learned a certain way of how you program how you do things every day in your life and so you're changing the program okay thank you and this is what they said what you must say to yourself is to remind yourself you are safe so when there is some frustration and it's harder to come in and kick into your natural intuition and you're like, yeah, I don't know if this really works. You want to say, remember, your intuition is your natural ability, the animal instinct internally within you. Animals have this. Now, your brain will kick in and it will almost sort of say, you can't do this. This doesn't make sense. This is crazy. Why would you believe in this? Now, your brain is kicking in because of your previous experiences and all the other things that you've gone through in your life. And it's sort of making you feel fearful. So you have to reassure it, they said, you have to be the parent to your brain. You now have to train your brain to say, no, I'm aware of this because you become aware of what's gone on and what's happening and how you're feeling uncomfortable. And you say, I am safe, they said. I am in control, they said. I am OK, they said. I am OK with this, they said. OK, and then they said, then you begin to watch how life begins to unfold for you. You begin to notice the differences. OK. They have stopped now. They've stepped back. I'm going to um, unmute you in a moment. Because some of the people that are here as guests, they're in the live audience. Um, and I will then answer those questions. And then at some point, I will put the answers up so people can hear the answers too from these individuals who've asked the questions. I love that. So I'm going to pause the recording so no one can hear your voices. 